Hello everyone, today I'm going to discuss a tool that Gentoo provides within Portage called Portage Q. Now this is a querying tool that's used to get information about a Portage setup, such as configs and which packages are installed. And the reason I wanted to discuss this tool is that there's not actually a lot of information about it built into a regular Gentoo install. For instance, if you were to run man Portage Q, no manual entry for Portage Q. It is also not directly addressed by name in the Portage man page itself either. Now the Gentoo wiki describes Portage Q as a tool to quickly query Portage information. It says it is primarily used by Gentoo developers in order to determine Portage configuration information, which implies that the average Gentoo user probably doesn't have a lot of need for Portage Q. And while that may be, I feel like it's always a good idea to know how to use the programs that are installed on your system. So we're going to go over some basic usage for Portage Q today. To begin with, if you just run Portage Q by itself, then it will begin spitting out a long list of various category and package names. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is all of the packages that can be installed by Portage. And this is an extremely long list that will take a very long time to print out. We don't want to see all that, so we'll cancel that out. Generally, that's not a very useful way to use Portage Q unless you just want, for some reason, a list of all of the available packages on Gentoo as a system. So let's clear that off. Now you can get more information about the basic usages of Portage Q by running it with a dash dash help option. And it's quite a long list, so let's pipe that to less. This will list all of the various available commands that Portage Q has. Now as the wiki says, most of these commands are useful for determining the way that your Portage install is configured and certain information about individual packages that are installed. Probably the most common use case for Portage Q and the one that I have seen in the context of things that an average user might want to do in Gentoo is the envvar command, which is used to return a specific environment variable as exists prior to ebuild.sh. Now in practice, all that means is that it will just spit out the values of certain variables if you try to read them through Portage Q. So let's open up another window here. And let's try to run Portage Q, envvar, and then the name of some built-in Portage variable. Uh, a good example is the features variable, which displays the so-called features that Portage has available, which are certain special functionality that can be turned on or off. This will display the contents of the features variable, which looks similar to the output of, say, the use flag variable. In fact, if you notice down here in the Portage Q help, it says that this command is similar to emerge dash dash info and then searching for the name of a variable. If you watch my first video on use flags, that's exactly the command that we used to find the value of the global use flags on your system. We can use Portage Q to do that as well by running Portage Q envvar use and this will spit out all of the use flags on the system, including the use expand flags. Now, envvar can be used to find the value of other variables as well, in particular certain user variables. We can use portage q envvar and then search for certain user configured variables, like let's say editor. And as you can see, it outputs user bin vim, because vim is what I have configured as my system's editor. Now, using portage q in this way is not really any different than using echo to display the value of a variable, such as again, editor. We'll also display user bin vim. But that is functionality that Portage Q has. Now one thing you might notice here in the help documentation is this term eroot. Now the eroot is simply the repository file system path. It is also an environment variable in Portage, and as such, we can obtain its value by running Portage Q envvar eroot. As you can see, it's simply root, the root of the file system. That is most likely what it is on your system as well, but to double check, you can run this command right here to tell. Now that we know what our eroot location is, we can actually use it in several of the commands that are available here in Portage Q. For instance, a good example of a command that has used from time to time is the command match. Now the syntax for using match is to provide it with the eroot and then an atom, which is just another term for a package and category combination. So if we want to use match, we can use Portage Q match eroot, which is just forward slash, and then a package name, for instance, Firefox. Now you can see what match did here was match took this package name and it expanded that into the package name and category and installed version. 
Match is very useful if you want to see what versions of specific programs that you have installed on your system, as well as if you need to find out what categories those packages belong to within Portage. Match also has another use as listed here. It says when given an empty string, all installed packages will be listed. So if we were to run Portage Q match followed by the E root and then an empty string, just open and close quotes we will get a list of all of the packages installed on our system. Now this could be very useful for a variety of reasons, and it is formatted in such a way to make it easily parsable with commands like grep. We can even pipe it to less if we want to read through it one line at a time. And this way you can get very detailed information about the packages that are installed on your system. Another good basic use for Portage Q is to find out the contents of virtuals. Now, virtuals are packages that are in the category virtual, and they are special e-builds that are used to define certain specific things on your system. For instance, you have an editor in the category virtual, and its value will actually be the package installed on your system that is used as your editor. Now, that is not the same as the contents of your editor environment variable. It's instead what Portage considers to be the virtual editor installed on your system, and is part of Portage configuration rather than user configuration. We can get information regarding virtual packages installed with Portage with the expand virtual option of Portage Q. Just like the help says, that is run with Portage Q expand underscore virtual followed by the E root, which is just forward slash on my system, and then an atom name. Now we could give it just any old atom like I gave Firefox before. But if we do that, it says error invalid atom Firefox. That's because Firefox is not a virtual atom. That is a virtual package. It's just the name of a regular package that's installed on the system. If you want to get a list of all the virtual packages that are installed on your system, a decent way to do that is to use the Portage Q command with the match option, e root, and then the empty string to print out all of the packages on the system, and then pipe that to grip for at the beginning of the line, lowercase virtual. This will print out all of the packages that are in the category virtual. Each of these packages that was just printed out is a virtual package, meaning that they really have more to do with the configuration of Portage than they do with specific packages themselves. We can get the value of some of them, such as say, RubyGems here by running Portage Q, expand virtual, E root and then virtual Ruby gems for our example. And that will spit out all of the information that is associated with the virtual Ruby gems package. For instance, it's going to spit out these Ruby gems packages that are associated with the different versions of Ruby installed on my system, as well as the different versions of Ruby themselves, Ruby 2.4 and Ruby 2.5. These are defined in the e build that is associated with the Ruby gems 15 virtual package right here. And Portage Q is a great way to get information about that. It's important to note that the syntax that I used here with Portage Q was very deliberate. I used the category name, a forward slash, and then just the package name, not the version that's associated with it here. For whatever reason, Expand Virtual doesn't like it when you use the version, so you should just use the category name and the package name when trying to get information about virtual packages. And that about does it for my brief introduction of Portage Q. Um, as the wiki says, it's a really a tool more for developers, but there are several uses that a regular user can get out of it as well. And it's always helpful to know more about Portage and the things that are installed on your Gen 2 system. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you, and we'll see you next time.